A huge thanks to our sponsor of this session, Niagara Conservation. Um, you definitely got to check out their stealth uh, toilet if you haven't seen that, if you're specking uh, toilets for projects. Uh, it's hard to believe how low one can go and to have a product that actually works and from what I've heard um, actually works better. A glowing review from an affordable housing multifamily developer who does renovations, believe it or not, only for the most part specs um, the Niagara Stealth uh, single flush 0.8 gallon per flush toilet. Um, I just can't believe it. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, email me at brett.little at greenhomeinstitute.org. I can shoot you the glowing review. We've seen multifamily developers using these now and came out with a new dual flush uh, toilet all the way down to 0.5 gallons per flush at the lowest. Um, I haven't heard any personal feedback on this, but you definitely want to check those out. All right, so welcome everybody to Introduction to the EPA Water Sense Certification for New and Existing Homes. Uh, this course is approved for one hour in continuing education units and something unique for this session, unlike some of our other sessions, you can pick up a uh, certified passive house uh, consultant CE as well. Uh, today I will be your moderator and somewhat simultaneously co-presenter. My name is Brett Little and I am the executive director here at the Green Home Institute. All right, the Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Um, and you can check us out at greenhomeinstitute.org. Uh, So with that, I want to introduce our presenter today, um, Olga. Olga holds a uh, bachelor's in architecture and a master's of environmental engineering. And as part of the WaterSense team, she works on new home portfolio focusing on the WaterSense new home certification, water efficiency in homes, energy efficiency, and as it relates to water heating and distribution. Um, as we go through this session today, you will see these two logos pop up, um, the water uh, efficiency logo and the V4 logo. That's when we'll be talking specifically about how WaterSense relates and can help out with your uh, lead BDNC homes and mid-rise projects. All right, so with that, I will hand it off to Olga and um, take it away. Um, and thank you. Thanks, Brett, uh, for the introduction, and uh, thanks for everyone who's joining us. Um, again, my name is Olga, and I am with the EPA Water Sense Program, uh, and today we'll be focusing mostly on the EPA Water Sense Homes uh, Labeling Program. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started here. Um, Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background on the need for water efficiency throughout the country and really uh, the reason why we've established um, the Water Sense program is um, here on the map uh, we can see the use of water throughout the nation um, as well as the increase in population that we're seeing. Uh, so this map uh, specifically shows a population change by 2030. And uh, you'll no as you'll notice, uh, some of the states with the higher uh, water use um, also show a high percentages of, of um, population increase. So it really what this means is that our, our water infrastructure um, is really going to take a big hit by 2030. And so one of the uh, ways to, to mitigate that and to, um, you know, help uh, with, with our water issues is through water efficiency. And so that's what the Water Sense program really aims at, at doing is reducing the, the amount of water that we need to use um, at this point, you know, within our homes and, and any other building type. Um, and so by looking at this map, what we really want to take away um, is to be clear and to have the understanding that uh, our national demand is increasing um, and also demand coupled with drought that we see throughout the states will continue to increase the stresses on our water supplies. Um, the EPA estimates that uh, 
the water utilities will need to invest more than $500 billion to update the aging infrastructure within the next 20 years. Um, and really, water efficiency is one of the most cost-effective ways uh, to save water, uh, mostly because if we change our, our behavior and how we use water, then that means that um, not any more water needs to be transported and treated and uh, delivered to, to the end users. So um, we also start to look at uh, the water and energy nexus uh, because energy is also has impact with the delivery of our water and also um, through the water heating that we use within homes. Um, and so the program, well, as we'll see later on, also focuses on our, our water heating circulation systems and how we implement those and how we can make them more efficient. Um, so how does water and energy interact? Well, the movement, treating, and heating of water. Um, and so what we refer to is um, the footprint uh, for every gallon of water. and. Um, and then also uh, we look at how uh, energy is used um, throughout the country. So nationally we see that the impact on energy uh, from water, it goes from 3 to 4%. Um, and then we can, if we look specifically at California, we see that we have a 20% energy impact um, to the to the end use. Um, at the municipal level it can be almost greater than 40%. And at the system level, energy is one of the highest utility costs. Um, so how, to, how do we use water at home? Um, how is it that, uh, what are the areas within the home uh, where, uh, you know, we all use the most water? As we see in this uh, pie chart, we notice that the bathroom is really where uh, the most impact is. And so you'll see uh, noted 70% of our water is used indoors and 30% outdoors is what we calculate. Um, in some areas of the country, um, we actually see this ratio of flip-flop. We'll, we'll have 30% uh, uh, use indoors and 70% outdoors, uh, mostly in the arid uh, regions of the country. So with that background, let's get more into what is the WaterSense program and um, how is it set up and uh, how does it work. Um, so the program was established uh, by the EPA in 2016. It's a voluntary program um, and it focuses on labeling products. Um, homes and uh, our partnerships are also a key component. Um, the idea for the program uh, was really to provide consumers and professionals uh, a way to uh, identify products and homes that use less water and that perform well. And um, performance really is a big uh, issue and a big um, component that we, or characteristic that we uh, feel very strongly about in our products and our homes. Um, and then uh, our third component is uh, behavioral change. Um, so we really want to educate the public. We want to educate um, home uh, users about how we use water um, and how uh, we can conserve it just by, um, not just by uh, replacing our products uh, or by redesigning our water systems, but um, by our end users. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the program has three main components, products, partnerships, and homes, and we'll discuss each of these in more detail as we move along. Um, so with our products, um, the WaterSense program has now labeled um, five different categories, I'm sorry, six different categories of products like we see in this chart. So we've got toilets, faucets, shower heads, uh, flushing urinals, um, weather-based irrigation controllers, and pre-rinse spray valves. Um, as you'll notice, uh, throughout the 10 years from when the, the program has been established, our, we've really grown a lot with uh, more than, um, I think this might be a bit outdated, yes, but uh, at the moment we have more than 17,000 products that have been labeled. Um, 
just for some specifications on, on how our products compare to the federal standard, um, we have this simple table. So you'll see that the toilets uh, for the water sense standard, um, it's required to have a 1.3 uh, GPF, uh, gallons per flush, whereas the federal standard is at 1.6. Uh, flushing urinals, um, water sense is at 0.5, uh, and the federal standard is at uh, one gallon. Uh, shower heads uh, for water sense, the requirement is 2.0 uh, gallons per minute, um, and the federal standard is at 2.5, and bathroom sinks uh, 1.5 versus the 2.2 of the federal standard. Um, so really our, our products aim to be 20%, uh, at least 20% more efficient than um, the federal standard. But we do um, make sure that our products perform um, well, or just as well as the standard um, products. And um, uh, Brett, if you want to go ahead and jump in. Yeah, just real quick, in, in regards to uh, Lead for Homes um, Building Design and Construction and Mid-Rise, um, you can see here I just added a couple more pieces. For the most part, if you're following the WaterSense program and the WaterSense standards, uh, you're going to be on track. Um, if you're using the prescriptive pathway for LEED, um, it's actually required that all of your applications be uh, labeled with WaterSense. Um, as you can see, for toilets, to get the one point, you actually have to go beyond the water sense to 1.1 1 .1, uh, or, or less. And then um, uh, urinals actually don't uh, comply because, for the most part, we're talking a negligible amount of commercial space. Though we highly encourage um, uh, low flow urinals. Uh, as far as, as far as shower heads go, uh, you can see that uh, just starting out, um, it's already point. 1.75, so a little more stringent than water sense to get one point. Bathroom sinks are going to be right on with um, uh, right on with water sense to get the one point. Um, and then the unique thing about the prescriptive pathway is that these are averages. So if if one bathroom, say for example, uh, it has has a higher flowing toilet. And then one has an even lower flowing one, like 0.8 gallons, for example. Uh, this is based on averages. Um, so there are ways to go in the prescriptive pathway above and beyond um, you know, those requirements. So, thanks. Great. Um, and so just to uh, dive a little bit more into uh, the products that are available and um, that are water sense labeled, um, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys. Um, so this is uh, right on our website. It's our uh, product search. Um, I'm sorry. Can you guys uh, see this? Or no, it's it's not currently sharing right now. But you'll have to, okay. have to share your screen. Right. That was. Um, okay. Yep. Missed that step. All right, so now we're on. Um, so right now I'm um, in our WaterSense website um, where we have our product search tool. And really what's cool about this is um, it's essentially a database of all the products that, are, that have been WaterSense labeled. Um, and so it's very simple, very basic. Um, you can go ahead and come and select a, a product category. Um, we've got faucets, toilets, uh, flusher meter evolved toilets, which we see in a uh, more commercial setting, uh, urinal, shower heads, irrigation controllers, commercial pre rinse spray valves. Um, and so just for the sake of, of uh, demonstration, let's go with the, with the sinks. And then uh, we can go ahead and uh, pick any, uh, almost any brands, or there are a lot of brands to pick from, um, which really covers a wide range of uh, price points and models and styles, um, which I know are big priorities for designers uh, when we're looking um, into specking some of these products. Um, and you know you can just choose any of those, and then it'll go ahead and pull a model. Uh, you also have the option of um, if your main concern is the flow rate, then you can go over to this side and decide what flow rate. And of course, with 1.5 being the maximum, um, which is the water sense standard. Um, so this is you know a pretty easy tool, um, free to use. It's on our website. Um, 
and available to, to everyone. Okay. Um, so let's stop sharing and uh, let me head back to the presentation. Okay. Um, okay, I had these just in case our internet got glitchy, uh, but that went well. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, just about our product, um, uh, we go ahead and uh, really stand behind our product. The EPA um, really backs us, uh, you know, backs it up. It's a third-party testing and certified, um, and um, what we do is the EPA provides the national specification and outreach for the water efficiency. Uh, then manufacturers support the product research, the testing and the branding of cost. Um, the licensed certifying bodies certify the products and police the labels used. And the licensed certification providers certify the new homes. So it's really a product that goes through a stringent process on being tested, on being monitored. Um, and we really take a lot of pride in our water sense labeling uh, because of, you know, the industry is counting on us uh, to really make these water efficient and to really claim that uh, homes are becoming uh, more efficient than their, uh, you know, standards or typical home. Okay. Um, the other component of our program uh, are partnerships. So who are our partners? Um, so as we stand, we have um, a little bit over 1,700 uh, partners. Uh, in various categories. Uh, we have manufacturers, uh, which design and create the products. Um, we have our certification bodies, which test and label our products. We have our retailers and distributors, which are big box uh, stores. Um, we have our builders, uh, which construct um, our water efficient homes uh, using water sense labeled products. We have our certification providers, and then we have our promotional partners. Um, our promotional partners really are um, really a, a key stone to our program because um, they go out to the communities and get the word out and really have a push on behavioral change and how it is that we use, um, even though we have efficient products, it doesn't mean that automatically we're going to save water. We really have to learn how to use the water. And so through our promotional uh, partners, we really get um, our word out in that sense. And so for the HOMES program, so we'll look a little bit at uh, how, how we label. Um, so the, the HOMES program aims at reducing water use within single-family residences um, by at least 20 percent. Um, education is also a big component of the program. Um, again, uh, we, we're looking at behavioral change, and um, the program aims also to encourage community infrastructure savings. Um, even though we're stating single-family new homes right now, um, we do uh, existing homes and we'll do multifamily also, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. Um, and um, just to throw out some numbers, we see that compared to the average home, uh, a family could uh, four could save, um, you know, quite a bit with the with making sure that their home is a water sense labeled. Um, so about 50 gallons of water, which are equal about to to uh, 2,000 loads of laundry um, could equal about $600 a year, which, I mean, could do for a nice vacation, I would say. Um, uh, another, well, uh, another one of our advantages with the program is that it aligns well with the EPA Indoor Air Plus program and also the EPA Energy Star program. Um, and it's convenient for a lot of the inspectors and the raiders because they're out looking at the same structures at the same homes. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like a, a one-stop for, for the three programs to verify and, and certify all these. So they really don't have to go much out of their way. Um, home uh, and energy raiders, uh, lead providers can conduct water efficiency home inspections. Um, and um, all the certification processes are, are relatively similar. Um, here's just a step by step of how the, the program um, goes. So the builder partners with EPA and commits to the labeling. Uh, the home is then inspected for their criteria and any issues are addressed. Um, the certificate, uh, the label certificate is issued by the licensed certificate, uh, certification provider and then the builder is um, then given the permission to promote uh, and use our water sense label mark. 
Um, so now we're going to, the uh, HOMES program has indoor criteria and then outdoor criteria. So first we'll go through the indoor criteria. Um, some of the required uh, items. Um, our water service pressure um, max has to be at 60 PSI. Um, leak prevention measures need to be in place. Uh, the water sense labeled plumbing fixtures need to be in place. Other water efficient plumbing fixtures are also considered. And uh, there must be an efficient hot water distribution system installed. Um, uh, Brett, I wasn't sure, did, did you want to jump in on here? Uh, due to the EB EB four, okay, um, okay, and then we also notice uh, uh, we have some optional items, um, and so by optional, what we mean is that if the uh, if these if this criteria meets the home and these are existing. <laughs> As well as uh, leak, yep. As well as leak uh, prevention measures. Now, this doesn't apply to uh, um, the multifamily or mid-rise projects. This is only specifically to um, single-family homes, as far as the pressure goes. And one unique thing too is you can, in more urban areas, you can check with the cities um, and see what some of their testing is. But we found that uh, you know some cities are very consistent in their PSI, so that uh, you know that that just makes it relatively easy. Okay, great. Um, thanks. Um, so for the for the optional items, um, like I mentioned, um, they're optional in the sense that uh, if the home has it, then they do have to meet the criteria. If the home doesn't have it, then obviously we're not looking for that. Uh, so some things that are maybe optional are um, dishwasher and clothes washer, uh, evaporative air conditioners, um, water softeners, and drinking water systems. So um, one of our one of the things that we found that are uh, poses the biggest challenges uh, with our indoor criteria is the hot water distribution. And so why why is it so important, and why is it that we um, give it uh, such a high ranking? Um, well, it's found we found that uh, through the hot water. Um, we tend to waste a lot of water, uh, approximately 3,650 gallons per year. Um, that's quite a bit. Um, because it's hot water, then again, energy is being used. And so 10 to 15% of energy is wasted. And a lot of the inefficiencies with our systems are the distance and the volume that these systems are carrying through. So we really want to start looking at how we're designing these these systems and how they're being placed within the home. And so here's just a, a fun graphic with our um, flow, which are, is our EPA Water Sons uh, spokesman or woman gallon. <laughs> um, and uh, and what we see here is on the left hand side. We see what a traditional distribution system usually looks like, where we have um, plumbing kind of snaking around the home. And what we're aiming for is what we see on the right-hand side, where we have a more direct connection from the water heater tank to the end use, um, whichever fixture that, that may be. Um, and so just for the, for the sake of, of um, more detail and understanding a little bit better, um, here we see a, a traditional hot water distribution system um, from a home in the 1950s where we had uh, smaller footprint homes um, and so the systems were relatively efficient in comparison to that, you know, the water heater and then um, our, our plumbing uh, fixtures weren't that far from it. Um, however, our homes have now expanded and we have larger homes with more bathrooms, with more fixtures, but we've continued to keep the same type of distribution system. So we still have the hot water heater in the same place and we've just decided to add on uh, more length and more feet of, of, uh, of plumbing. Um, and so we really haven't thought this out, but rather just kind of adapted it to our new homes. And so here we want to present uh, some new solutions or other options as to how we can make this more efficient. Um, so this first system 
it's a, a typical of a core system where we have the water heater um, essentially centralized uh, in the home and then each water fixture being connected directly to it. This allows for the wait time uh, of the user to be minimized um, when they're waiting for hot water. Um, and then it also allows for the plumbing to be uh, smaller and so more efficient uh, with you know, less water being wasted. Um, another option is the uh, manifold system where the fixtures essentially uh, connect directly uh, to the main uh, trunk and, um, and go directly to each uh, fixture. And uh, a third option, um, I'm sorry, and a third option that we have is a, a recirculation system. And with this one, we do want to highlight that this has to be an in-demand uh, recirculation system um, so that the water is uh, moving along and being delivered um, when there is a user um, rather than having the whole system, you know, being heated uh, all the time. Um, and so these are the three options that I kind of offer. And of course, um, as designers, uh, this is just more about thinking of uh, how these systems are designed within the home, how they work with all the other rooms in the home, um, but also our plumbing professionals. How do we um, ask them to kind of collaborate and think uh, a little bit outside of the box from a traditional system? Um, okay. And, um, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Brett. Yeah, so um, if you go to the energy and atmosphere section um, for LEED V4, this is actually exists in energy and atmosphere rather than water. Um, what you'll find is a lot of these same water sense recommendations that you're following um, are optional credits um, if you're using the uh, uh, prescriptive pathway. Um, within uh, lead for the energy and atmosphere. Uh, again, getting into the setup of the system as well as the length and um, uh, width of the pipe sizing, um, you'll find a lot of those same applications, um, recommendations um, for both programs. Um, the other interesting thing is, is at the end of the day for, for lead v force purposes, uh, you can simply skip all of that too and then just put on uh, R4 uh, uh, pipe wrap insulation, and and that will will work uh, just the same as well, and and pick up two points as far as uh, you know, as far as V uh, four is concerned. And Olga, I thought while I had you, I'd ask real quick about um, point source tankless water heaters and what you all might be seeing in regards to distribution and, and seeing um, those being utilized. Okay, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, point source on-demand tankless water heaters. So have you been seeing those utilized for the WaterSense program? Um, just the basic concept of having a couple uh, on-demand electric, ideally electric water heaters placed strategically around the house. Yes. Um, so yes, we have uh, seen some cases of those, and and um, with the water heating, it really depends. It's very much on a case by case basis. Um, usually with the footprint of the house, um, so they usually work just fine from a uh, water and energy perspective. Um, however, they do have the limitations in terms of the electrical loads. Great. Thanks. Sure. Um, I also have uh, a question here that popped up, and I, I might have missed it. Um, what leak prevention measure, measures do you recommend? Um, and usually all, what we do is um, a pressure test, um, and this, uh, you know, can will show where the system is leaking. And you can usually go to the store and buy, um, you know, like a $10 device. Uh, that helps you do this. You can put uh, food coloring in your toilet tank too, can't you, if you want to check the toilet? That's a good idea. Yeah. Now, I, a lot of our assessors have been going into a house and actually marking where the water uh, meter is at and then shutting off. Um, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. They what, mark where the water meter is at 
and then they do their whole home inspection, energy inspection, if you will. Um, and then they, uh, two hours, three hours later, they tell no one to use any water, and then they come back and check and see if any water had been used. Is that something you've seen as well? Uh, yep. Great. Yeah, it, it, it does work. Um, it just tends to take a little bit longer. Um, okay. Okay. Um, all right, so our outdoor criteria. Um, so with, uh, with the outdoor criteria, uh, naturally we're looking at the landscape. We're also looking at any other fixtures that are outdoors, such as pools and spas and other ornamental water features. Um, we do ask that the landscape is used, um, is designed using uh, the WaterSense water budget tool, which we'll do a quick demo on um, shortly. Um, and then if there is an irrigation system installed, um, it, it needs to be designed or installed by WaterSense um, professional, uh, certified professional, uh, and it needs to be audited also by, uh, by a WaterSense professional. Uh, so, I believe we're going to, let me try to share my screen again, um, and we'll go ahead and look through the, through the water budget tool. Okay. Okay. All right, so the water tool, um, for those of you who, who do LEED and, and other certification programs, I'm sure you're over-tooled. <laughs> but uh, this is yet one more. Um, but it is uh, very simple. And um, I mean, it's, you don't just have to use it for water sense. It's up on our website. It's free to use. Um, and it just gives you a, an idea of the type of landscape um, that you're considering to use and how much water uh, will be needed for it. Um, and it essentially gives you a pass or fail. Um, so just for the sake of, of uh, a demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and do some simple inputs. So we're going to say um, this is a water sense labeled home. Um, uh, we're going to say it's a single site. Um, for the sake of water efficiency, we're going to say that uh, we don't need an irrigation system. And um, I'm going to use a zip code uh, here in, in DC. Um, and so the the tool uh, has the background uh, geographical uh, information, uh, and then uh, we're going to do a small yard uh, of just 200 square feet. And um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to change the zip code just so that you guys see the difference of um, water needed for the same type of landscape in one area of the country versus uh, another. Um, then you go ahead and go next step. And so with the 200 square feet that we've uh, allotted for landscape, uh, we go ahead and divide it into um, 100 for ground cover. Um, and we have the options of um, saying how much water demand um, this type of ground cover will need. Uh, we're going to say low. Because we said there's no irrigation, uh, then this um, area is blocked out. And um, and then here it starts to calculate w how much water it's going to be needing. Um, then to make up for the rest of our landscape area, we're going to say another 100 square feet for um, shrubs. And uh, we're going to say that the shrubs need a, a medium um, amount of water demand. And so we see the water, of course, going up. And then at the bottom, uh, we've used all of our area. We see that our water allowance is 560 gallons per month. We see that the type of landscaping that um, we've inputted is uh, 280, uh, requires 280 gallons per month. And so we're below our allowance. So we're, we're in good shape. Uh, the next step, simply ask for your information uh, if you want to put in your email to get a report on this, uh, but it's a very quick tool, and so really that's, that's all there is to it. Um, to browse back on the tool, uh, you want to uh, click on the tabs rather than your back button because uh, it will just kick you out. So I'm just going to go back um, and show you the difference 
uh, between zip codes. So like we saw here, uh, the water allowed for a code in DC is 560 gallons, and um, now I'm gonna go back and uh, update this with a zip code in California, uh, 614. And so we're, we're not changing any of it. Uh, we just wanna see. And so there's, there's a little bit of a difference. So now in California, I'm only allowed to do 552 gallons. Uh, per month. Um, however, with this type of, of landscaping, um, I'm still within our within our range um, to be okay. And um, of course, if you're using more water than you're allowed, then um, this is going to turn into a big red, and it's going to essentially give you a fail. Um, but like you say, it's a, it's very simple. You can come back in and, and change the type of shrubbing. Um, you know how much water it's gonna it's gonna be needing, um, the square footage that you want to do of each type, um, and so it's kind of just a, a fun little tool. Again, that's at our website and and it's free. Um, so let's get back to the presentation. So that was for our water tool. Um, and so Brett will talk a little bit more about um, how this relates to LEED. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, we might have lost. Yeah. So, oh. hey everybody. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, in the uh, so in the 2008 version of uh, Lead for Homes, they actually have a, a water tool um, that they had developed um, prior to the water budget tool existing, and they uh, you basically needed to have a, a master's degree a landscape architect on your team to utilize this tool and to max out your water points or calculate your water points. And so what I really like about the water sense water budget tool now is that um, if you're doing the, uh, especially if you're doing the performance pathway in LEED, um, you can now utilize or you need to utilize the, uh, the EPA's one, which, which makes it a lot easier. So on that note, Olga, I wanted to ask real quick, um, because in the past, you know, we needed professionals that went in and sort of estimated, um, you know, evapotranspiration rates, and uh, microclimates and all sorts of other things. How does um, sort of this tool solve that issue so that, um, you know, you can, you, you have to work with a landscape architect, somebody with their master's or 10 years of experience, or, you know, can you read through the recommendations and be able to gauge that high, low, you know, sort of medium requirement? Um, so the tool accounts for that, uh, which means that um, we've essentially gotten the professionals behind it. And so you, when you put in your numbers, it's all accounted for. So you're just by kind of reading through the, the, the training, you, you can gauge, you know, what, what you know, because the question I get when people see this, you know, you know, is it high water, is it low, is it medium, um, you know, what do I pick? So you're saying there's some, some guidance on that? Oh, I see. Um, we usually uh, reference the local resources uh, to get this information, um, and uh, and we usually list it on our website. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, um, so what's going on, like I said, with LEED is, is it, um, there is now a performance pathway. Um, a lot of green building programs are using performance pathways. Um, similar to the way that you would go in and do an energy yeah. model and, you, and then verify the energy usage um, during the performance testing. Um, we're seeing more and more of that in the water world so you can make informed decisions in your design and say, how much water does your client want to use? Um, how much do they want to pay for it? Um, and so now you can start to make informed um, decisions using water. So what Lee has done is they've made a uh, indoor tool that hitched itself to the water budget tool. And so um, the information that you get out of the water budget tool um, for the outdoor water use is something that you'll need to start out with to get, um, you know, to complete this. So here's the snapshot of the checklist that I have in front of me. Um, and then going through this real quick, 
Um, there is another tab if you have access to the uh, V4 checklist, um, the water reduction tab. And so you can see I went through and sort of filled out some of the numbers that you'll be able to access um, that, that you would have seen on the, uh, the, the uh, handout there that was derived out of the, uh, out of the water sense budget tool. And you can see you can enter in your baseline for the site and then your landscape water requirements for the peak. Um, this is also cool because if you have rain or gray water calculations, um, those can be inputted in right there. Um, and then you're going to be filling out, in this case, this is a single family um, four bedroom home. So it just estimates how many occupants you have. That doesn't mean you'll have that many. It's just, it's just an estimation based on what's in the house um, as far as bedrooms go. And then uh, just real quick, you, what you do is you go through and you enter in um, each of your products. And so if you've got different products, uh, different brands, different flow rates being used, um, you, you know, you want to make sure to separate them out. What I did here is what we see often sometimes is like on the first floor you might see an ADA toilet uh, that oftentimes have a higher flow rate um, being installed, um, you know, versus maybe on the second floor you've got a conventional toilet that you can get a, a little bit of a flow rate out of. Um, once you insert all of that information, um, what you're going to get back here at the top is the, uh, the water sense, um, the water, uh, the shower, I'm sorry, the, the lead uh, design water use, the baseline, and then what your savings are. And those will change based on what your inputs are. So again, this is where you get to make informed decisions in the design process. Um, I didn't do clothes washers or dishwashers in this, in this case, but you can do those as well. And then you get, of course, the overall result of your um, design use, your baseline, and then what your savings are both for indoor and outdoor, and then that totals, and then at the end you get your um, reduction number. That reduction number goes back into the checklist, and then there you can drop down how many points you get based on that reduction. Um, and then also more importantly, you can, um, you know, you can go in and further uh, for your clients, get the cost of water in the area, and cost of water is going up. We've been seeing maybe 5% on average in some places even more. Uh, and you can try to create for them potentially a, a mortgage calculator of what it's going to cost them if they view certain um, water usage applications. You won't find that in the lead tool, but that's something that can be added or uh, you can use a tool like the, um, the WERS uh, index rating to, you know, calculate some of those different things. Um, but that's it for the, the, the lead application um, in regards to the uh, performance pathway. Great. Um, thanks for that, Brett. Um, okay, so now we're going to look at uh, multifamily and how the uh, all of this criteria applies to multifamily settings. And uh, and so uh, the requirement uh, for multifamily is that buildings have to be three stories or less. Um, so we're not doing any high rises uh, at the moment. Um, and then uh, the, each unit, um, including in mixed-use uh, mixed buildings, they have to have uh, independent heating, uh, cooling, and their hot water systems. Right, and uh, so this is an or uh, rather than and. So either three stories or uh, each unit needs to be independently uh, metered. Um, Okay, so uh, even though the label is given to each individual unit, um, if the units are within a multifamily setting, um, then the multifamily uh, building or complex uh, does need to meet certain uh, criteria uh, when it comes to the common spaces. So some of the common spaces are laundry facilities, um, the metering, uh, outdoor pools and irrigation, and then the building also has to provide uh, education, and we do the pressure loss test uh, throughout the whole um, building. Um, I believe this is one of the prerequisites. Uh, am I correct, Brett? Right, one of the prerequisites for um, the lead. Um, okay, and then another question that we get a lot is, uh, do we label existing homes? Um, the short answer is yes. 
the the long answer is um, yes, but. <laughs> um, Existing homes are uh, able to earn the, the label, um, however, we have found that uh, homeowners uh, have uh, challenges, especially when it comes to the hot water distribution systems, mostly because um, of the cost that's involved in retrofitting uh, some of these uh, plumbing systems and moving your water heater around and sort of, you know, we designed homes where our water heater is kind of uh, tucked in somewhere and it's not very flexible to move around. Um, and so this is usually one of our, our largest challenges. Um, but it could still be done, uh, and uh, we have seen uh, homeowners that have done it. Um, another challenge is uh, the outdoor, um, mostly because it's uh, usually a, a rather large area uh, of the property. Um, and, um, and again, can just be costly. Uh, however, there are many opportunities for existing homes to uh, either reach the water sense label or just simply make their water their homes uh, more water efficient. Uh, so simple ways to, to do this are um, to replace uh, water fixtures with water sense label products, um, which are very easy to find uh, at your local store. Um, the leak detection, like we mentioned uh, earlier, and uh, and of course, ultimately, our um, behavioral changes and how it is that we use water. Um, and I think that's it for our presentation uh, today. Uh, so we welcome any questions uh, or any comments. Um, that any of the participants may have. And Brett, if you want to, to add anything else. I do see a question uh, here um, regarding the worst index. Uh, the question uh, basically just asked, um, the words index rating. Um, and so uh, there are two systems under development uh, to create the rating system, which is similar to HERS uh, for the water use. Um, one is uh, WORS, which stands for the Water Efficiency Rating System. Um, and this is being led by the Green Builder Coalition. Uh, and then the second is the WER index, and that's a W-E-R index. Um, and that's the Water Efficiency Rating Index. And this one is being uh, led by RESNA. Um, not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, thanks, Olga. And I just dropped in the uh, the link there um, for a couple of those so everyone can see it. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free. We got plenty of time for for questions here, so please drop your questions uh, right into the chat box. And right before we get to them, um, for those of you looking to get your continuing ed, make sure to check your email at the end. Take the survey. Um, this course is now approved for uh, FIAS, so there's the link there. You'll also get that. Um, drop in your AIA, we'll report that. Uh, for those of you listening on demand, uh, so not right now, I'm not talking to anyone here right now, uh, make sure to take your 10-question quiz with a 70% passing rate. And as you're dropping in your questions, I just want to give a uh, big thanks to those who support our work and allow us to do what we do. Uh, all of our members, our board of directors, our volunteers, um, uh, Build Equinox, uh, Suntuitive, Niagara, and Panasonic. Um, thanks to everyone's uh, support for that. So yeah, some um, some questions are rolling in here. Uh, I believe one of them goes back to the uh, hot water systems recommended or, um, for conventional homes um, and just some of the challenges you see of these systems being used in multifamily projects and how those can be overcome. Um, yeah, so um, we do see uh, some of the systems being used uh, in the multifamily setup. Um, however, when you have that in-unit uh, water heating, um, there's really very little difference from the single-family home. Um, when you have several, when you have central systems, however, uh, things do tend to get a little bit more complicated. Um, so we actually have a guide for efficient hot water distribution that's available on our website, um, and that really would be the best resource um, for more information. Great, thanks. Um, so the other question here. Was about uh, was about the uh, the the, uh, the EPA's water sense water budget tool and yeah I just wanted to verify or continue 
uh, to elaborate that uh, this is used for lead compliance in the performance pathway on V4 homes and multifamily. So uh, at this point, I do not believe it is something you can use in the commercial rating system. And um, as much as we've tried to ask Okay, um, while Brett comes back, uh, we have another question. Um, any suggestions for locating water leaks in existing buildings, uh, mainly residential? And I think we touched up on this um, earlier on. Uh, so really the pressure test is the best way uh, to do it. Um, I don't know if uh, Brett is there. Um, for what we call, I guess, phantom leaks, uh, quote unquote, uh, that you really can't find, um, a lot of times it's our toilet flappers. Uh, so that's usually a, a good place to look. Um, another question here is uh, they're asking whether the two index, indexes are, are similar. Um, and uh, yes and no. <laughs> um, I guess it goes back to technicalities um, and really the organizations that are leading them. But um, I, I really don't have a clear answer for that question. Sorry about that. Um, okay, well, we seem to have uh, lost Brad, but um, again, I wanted to thank everyone who's online. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, uh, here in the final screen, you can see our contact information. Uh, you're welcome to call the, the Watersons helpline, um, and I can be contacted through this uh, medium also. Uh, we're here to help with technical questions or any suggestions uh, or whatever it may be. Uh, but yeah, thanks again to everyone. Hey. And, uh, hey. Hey. hey, everybody. This has probably been one of the worst days I've ever had with technology, so um, I really hope it never happens again because it's it's very embarrassing. Um, so let's hope my computer doesn't shut, up, shut off and my phone hang up on me again and keep moving forward with some more questions if, if, uh, if, if you still have some time, Olga. I do. I do. I was actually, uh, we didn't have any more questions, so I was kind of wrapping up, but if oh. you're back, I mean, I, I'm available. Okay, great. So you've got to the one on the uh, rebates and tax incentives as well? Uh, no. Uh, okay. So regarding the rebates, um, at the federal level, we don't have any rebates, um, but we do encourage people to look uh, for their, usually water utilities offer them, um, municipalities, cities, and if you go to our website, there's a link specific for that, and you can search uh, by location. Okay, great. So there are there are some incentives out there. Definitely, yes. Probably. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, some questions here. Uh, as far as commercial and, and uh, mid-rise buildings go, um, is EPA working on any kind of uh, labels for those, or is, is there anything else out there that exists for those kinds of buildings? Um, at WaterSense, we don't have, uh, they're definitely on our drawing board, uh, but we don't have anything out right now, no. Got it. Um, as far as the database search, I noticed that uh, the flow rate sort of ends uh, where the, um, at least what I thought I saw, it looked like the flow rate ends where uh, 
where the, the is it where the maximum is or where the minimum is? So if someone's trying to go above and beyond water sense, can they search on there as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so let me go back to um, share. Okay, so for some reason uh, I, I can't share my screen anymore. Um, oh, but, yeah. Okay. Uh, yep, yep. Oh, go ahead now. You okay. can do it now. Okay. Uh, my screen. Um, if you want to go right, so so 1.5 is the water sense uh, requirement, meaning that um, products need to meet this uh, criteria to obtain the label. Um, however, there are products that have gone, you know, beyond that, and so they're even more efficient. Um, and so, for instance, here for faucets, we see that some go as low as 1.0. Uh, um, and this does not affect performance. I just want to really highlight that, that even though they're more efficient um, and the floor rates are less, um, the performance is still should be, you know, at the same level. Um. Yeah, so on that note, on the, on the performance, I just wanted to reiterate, is it required that uh, for EPA water sense certification that the flow rates be tested right there in the field and verified? Uh, for homes, yes, it is. Yeah, for homes, okay. Yeah. Yep. And I know that that isn't one of the requirements of LEED, um, but I know it's a pretty simple and inexpensive um, thing that any rater can do, right? I mean, it's not... It's oh, yeah, essentially, I mean, you're just going to fill a cup or a bucket. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, I thought that was, yeah. Um, okay, so help me out with this one. Uh, I live here in Michigan and um, uh, on the other side of the state, but, um, you know, with all the issues going on in Flint and lead, uh, I've been hearing, and I, I'm hearing a lot and, and cringing as I hear it, that um, reducing uh, water usage actually could be a negative thing in that case, and that in fact you want to use more water um, to help drive out some of the lead out of the system. Is there, and maybe you don't want to answer any of this, but you know, is there any truth to that? Is asking people in those sorts of situations to reduce water usage uh, actually could be a bad thing in that case? What What are some thoughts there? All right, so I'm, I'm going to throw uh, Jonah under the bus on this one, and I'm going to pass it on to him. Okay. I thought I could just lurk in the background while Olga did all the work. Uh, it's a really your good whole question. Office is, your whole office disappeared. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a really good question, Brett. Uh, um, certainly it's something that, uh, you know, that uh, understandable uh, level of concern. Um, what we worry about in, the, in regards to lowering flow rates is reducing the residency time of water. What happens is we are really good in this country for the most part with some, with very few examples, Flint being a, a very noticeable one, at delivering clean, healthy, safe water to uh, the point of use. What can happen uh, once it enters that building is if residency time is long, the chlorine residuals, which is what protects us from all of those on-site pathogens, can start to break down. In single family, in, certainly in single family homes, in any residential scenario, even in efficient uh, buildings, our usage is pretty high. And so we don't see really long resident residency time. That's not to say it's not a concern, but it's not uh, the same as, say, a commercial building where we might really be sit having the water sit in those pipes for a really, for a really long time. Sure. So I don't want to say that it's not, it's not a concern. I also do want to take the uh, take the opportunity to to you know rebut the statement that we should be using more water. And, and I, I really I um I often uh, uh, use the analogy to compare this to indoor air quality, which is when we started making buildings more efficient from an energy perspective, and we started sealing them up tighter, we realized that oh no, we're trapping in all of those contaminants, and we're breeding them in. A lot of um, airborne uh, contaminants are gradient driven, and that can have really negative impact. On, um, on our health, and that's very true. But the narrative that started to develop was that, well, maybe we were better off when we, quite frankly, built our, our homes in such a crappy fashion that they just leaked air in and out all day long without any control. When in fact, no, the answer is, you know, it's good that we build our buildings more efficiently. It's good that we seal them up. Yes, we need to be paying, att paying attention to air quality and turnover rate and things like, and things like, that, that, like that as well. So, like I said, I, I want to be really clear that, you know, 
let's, let's not confuse, let's, let's neither say that no, it's not an issue that needs to be taken seriously, nor let's, let's dilute ourselves into thinking that somehow we're better off just guzzling up all the water and using the resource inefficiently. There is a, there is a balance there and we have to, we have to take it seriously and pay, pay close attention to it. So hopefully that, that answers your question in uh, perhaps more detail than you really wanted to know. <laughs> No, no, no. I definitely, I, I definitely appreciate your your interjection there. Um, and I wanted to to stick to the water quality piece because if I understand the uh, uh, program right, you 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 know you have some measures in there um, for water quality as well. Is that just to make sure that the uh, devices being used to filter water are efficient and not wasting water, like um, uh, you know, like some applications have been. Uh, um, you know, said to have do, or is there an actual requirement for a water sense certified home to have, um, you know, water quality tested and ensure that it's up to a certain level? Yeah, so I think um, you're referring to some, requir some uh, requirements we have for optional pieces of equipment. Um, okay. And that okay. really does speak directly to the fact if you're using um, a treatment, um, uh, piece of treatment equipment, I think, um, uh, reverse osmosis uh, filtration is the most common yeah. that comes to mind. Those actually do have a consumption associated with them because there's a certain amount of water that will be rejected along with everything else that couldn't make its way through the membrane. Um, so we do have, have those, those requirements. We don't require that there's treatment present. Right? If, mm -hmm. if there is present, then yes, we want to make sure it's, it's efficient. Now, our program's about water efficiency. Um, we have many other okay. parts of the, uh, the office that we're sitting in right now. Uh, that implements the, uh, the Safe Drinking Water Act. Um, and, you know, again, with uh, uh, the, you know, some very unfortunate um, uh, exceptions, um, do a phenomenal job of, job of it. Um, and so that's, you know, that, that's what we rely on. We don't have additional requir requirements beyond, uh, beyond, beyond that. Um, and, you know, again, I really do want, I think we all, we probably don't spend enough time appreciating the fact that we, we live in a country where, um, you know, we're more than 300 million people, and we can walk up to any tap, any tap in the country, turn it on, and be confident in the quality and safety of that water. There's, there's no place else in the world where that's true on that on the same scale. Um, and so we, uh, that our, our, our public, uh, our public distribution system really is a, a modern marvel. Very good. Um, I, I definitely appreciate your time, Olga, Jonah, for joining us today. Uh, for calling in, appreciate uh, uh, EPA WaterSense for allowing you to do this to get this information out. Um, where can people go and learn more if they want to get involved? Um, uh, wh where's a good place for them to go? Uh, so definitely our website, uh, epa.gov/watersense. Um, we have all our information there, and uh, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, um, our helpline, uh, which is noted on the screen, and you can always email us uh, watersense.epa.gov. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks again. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, have a good rest of the week. Take care. Great. Thanks. Bye bye.